Rapid Dungeon. Dun dun dun! Hi, welcome to another video from Cardboard East. My name is Jay, I play board games from Asia and share what I find with all of you. Today, we're gonna to talk about another game from Asia launching on Kickstarter, and that is Rapid Dungeon. Here's my wife's copy of Wormspan, so you can give you an idea of what the size of this box is. Da -da -da. This is a little bit bigger than I was anticipating, which is quite nice because I like uh, bigger size boxes. Looking inside, this box lid is a little tight, not too tight, but just tight enough, which is perfect in my opinion. Here are the rules. The rules are not stapled. I think that's to help keep costs down. And it's quite clever and quite concise. You can see here the contents and the components, and there are all these numbers here on the left to show you what they're pointing to and referencing here on the right. And they do give lots of examples here, which I'll go over with you. And then they also have a nice little flow chart here in case you'll need it uh, through the game. And I really don't think you will because this game is, is quite simple. And then here are the big portions of the game. I really like this insert. This insert works perfectly and fits all your heroes nicely. And these are the stars of the show, your heroes. Now they do have two sides to them, light and dark. And they even have this little yellow thing here that matches. This is a sponge, but I want to say that it feels exactly like a beach sandal. Like it has that, I guess, texture and feel to it. Like that's what it definitely feels like. Like I think like this would be like a kid's sandal if you can glue it together and if they had tiny weird shaped feet. Heroes, down. Now let's look at the star of the show here and these are your dungeon deck cards. The quality of these are quite nice. I'm really impressed by these, but I think if you took a quick look here on the back, yeah, you can see Long Pack. This was manufactured in Long Pack. Long Pack is a really good board game manufacturer. They make quality stuff. So you can see here, uh, these are the stars of the show. So here's your red hero, there's your blue hero, and where's your yellow hero right here? It's a nice little witch to go with you. These are the treasures you can get. You can get a diamond. This is the treasure chest, which is useless on its own, but if you find a key, well then this will give you more points here. And there are also different various orcs. So you have little orcs here, he's so cute, yes he is. And you can kill him if you want to. And there's also a dragon in here somewhere. We can find him, where are you? Where are you dragon? There you are, nice big dragon. Or a cute little orc. Either way, you'll stomp him into the ground. And that's the entire contents of the deck. Over here are some of the other cards here. Uh, these are your hit points. You have four, three, two, and then one, and then toast. Moving on, here are all the little mini expansion cards that you can find in the game. And you can see here, here's your unicorn. Here are your traps, the thief, and the potions. And I'll explain what all these mean in just a little bit. But let's get on to the star of the show, and that are these the dungeon guards, mats, boards. What's really interesting is you see this picture here of the hero walking into the dungeon. And if you play with any of the mini expansions, you can see them walking into the dungeon. And then this is what they find. They find potions here. Let's take a quick look at this. This is the normal dif difficulty rating. And then this is hard. Hard has two hit points. Uh, Normal has four hit points. And you can see also this is a point breakdown. We have each diamond gives you two points. Each pair of the treasure and key gives you 12. And a set of heroes gives you six. And the number of goblins that you step on uh, will give you from anywhere from two to 22 points. So if you can see here, this is two, 12, six. And this is the advanced, which goes three, 18, nine. So the points are a little bit different here as well as the goblins that you step on. So that's three to 33, whereas in the normal, it's only two to 22. Well, you can definitely play uh, this way. This is totally fine, but I think the real fun of the game comes from these little uh, mini expansions that come within the game. And let's take a look at them now. So here you'll play with the potion cards and you can see that the potions will double your score of goblins that you step on. Yay, that's really good. Or you can play with a thief and how the thief works here is that if you get the thief, well then you'll be able to steal a card from another player and add it to your collection, which is quite fun. Here's a unicorn. 
Everyone loves unicorns, right? And the unicorn, well, if they, lo they love eating crystals, I think. I think this is what it means. And your crystal or your diamond score will be multiplied by three. Now, if you like some of these mini expansions, well, then you can just play with them together. So here are the potions and the thieves together, and this is a quick reminder of how they play. Or maybe you like the thief and the unicorn together, and then this is how they play. Or maybe you just like the potion and the unicorn together, and this is how you score them. And then down below here, these are the cooperative mode. These are the dungeon bosses here. Here he is with the, I guess like a Kamehameha, or maybe it's like a Naruto spin attack. And you're playing with all of these, the potions, the unicorns, and the thieves. And you can see here where it says all. Actually, I think it should say each. So if each player has greater than or equal to 30 points by the end of the game, then yay, you win the game. And if not, if one of you do doesn't have that, well, then it's game over. And if you're feeling for more of a challenge, instead of doing the, the king, you could do, oh, you could do the dragon, which is... Uh, Terrifying. You can see here, here's the scoring, how the scoring works, and then it's 50 points as opposed to just 30. And now well, I'll go ahead and, well, I'll teach you how to play the game. First thing you're going to do is choose if you're going to do normal or hard. Let's just stick with normal mode, and you'll place that here, put it at the center of the table, and then you're going to decide which of the little mini expansions you're going to play with. Uh, let's go with Thief and Unicorn. I tend to like this combination here, and we'll go ahead and place it all right here at the center of the table. Then you're gonna prepare each player. So let's say you'll set up for a three player game. Here you have red, blue, and purple. Now there are two sides here, uh, light and dark. It doesn't matter for setup. So you can just place them, you know, any way you want. We'll just leave it like that. We'll take your life cards here and you can see here that says four. So you're gonna put them on four uh, for each player. And then you're gonna prepare the deck. So here is your regular deck of cards. You're going to give them a good shuffle. Huzzah! And then you're going to deal out seven cards to each player. The rest of the cards, you just place them here off to the side, and you'll use them in just a little bit. Now, don't forget that we're playing with a unicorn and the thief. So we're going to look at the extra cards here, and we're going to take the unicorns out and the thieves out. And we can go ahead and let's use the traps just in case for today. And then the potions, well, we'll just put these back into the box and we won't need them. Here, we'll take these, we'll shuffle them up. And we're in a little bit of luck here today because there'll be three players. So you'll do two, four, six. And let's say, for example, if there were another player in the game, let's say green, suddenly decide, came in late and says, hey, I want to join in and play. No big deal. You just give green a life card. You'll deal them seven cards, so deal seven cards just like everyone else. But because you played with the thief and the unicorn, I gave everyone else two extra cards. Well, then those two extra cards here you'll take up together. So some players will have the specials, some players will have more of the normal cards. You'll take those, shuffle them up together, and then deal them out to everyone. So now, Everyone will take their personal decks, shuffle it up, and then you should be good to go. Now, the base game only has uh, seven cards. Then, because we played with these, it became eight to nine, so now we have nine cards. So, the base game will have seven rounds, and then you can add, depending on how many cards you add in, up to maybe seven or 11, and also depending on player count. There's nothing in the rule book that says you can't uh, take the whole deck and stick it in here, but I don't recommend it because it's it's quite long, and the game is designed to be short. I have played one where you had a deck of maybe 11 cards, and that seemed totally fine. And then now, let's talk about how to game. Now, here we all set up, ready to go. You can see that we have each player set up with their life card here in the corner and their own personal decks. Now, while this, uh, ideally, you think, should be in the center of the table, no, 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 do not put this at the center table. Uh, let's uh, break the picture up, unfortunately, and slide it off here to the side, and then we'll go ahead and teach you how to play. The first thing you're going to do is each player is going to take a card and place it here to the center of the table, holding onto it. So imagine my hand here uh, times four, and all these players here have all their cards laid out. And then you're going to count to three. One, two, three. And then you're going to flip. Now, as soon as the cards are flipped, players are going to grab their heroes and not place. No, no, no. They're going to toss them onto the cards. All of this simultaneously, all rapid, all chaotic-y, lots of fun. Now, there is a few rules here. Well, you can't 
place it, you can't drop it, you must throw it onto the card. Also, you can't throw onto your own card, you must go onto other players. Another thing is that some cards here are dark, you can see like the monsters here, so you wanna make sure your hero lands on the dark side. If you have, want to get a hero or a treasure, you can see this is a nice lighter color, well then you wanna make sure that your hero uh, lands on the light side in order to capture or acquire this card. Now all of this is happening at the same time, and keep in mind though that sometimes like things can happen to where if you're not careful, This can happen. Now, it took me a few tries to do that, uh, but sometimes if you're, not, if you're not forceful enough, you'll land on one side and then flip over to the other, which can be quite frustrating at times, but I think with enough practice, you'll get better at it. So you can see each player here is slowly throwing their hero onto cards. Through the course of movie magic, everyone has landed on a card, and let's talk about that because sometimes, well, you won't hit your mark. In an ideal situation such as this, everyone has landed on a card, everyone gets that card, you'll take that card, and then put it into your deck. So let's see, this player was, what, purple? I can't remember. And then they'll take this and they'll put them here and they're in a little tableau, so they can slowly begin collecting more cards. But, there are ways to fail. That's right, fail. And let's talk about that now. If your hero is dark and lands on a hero and the colors don't match like they should, you fail. If you miss, you fail. Sometimes two heroes will land and one will have the majority of the card and one will have just a little bit of the card. Well, blue fails. Sometimes, maybe just lucky enough that you'll be like half and half on the card and you're about, oh, it's about even Stevens here. Well, guess what? They both fail. Sometimes we've seen something like this happen to where one person lands on it, but another person lands on them. Well, guess what? Green, you're out of here. You fail. Blue, you win. Good job. Now, I feel like I should say that acquiring cards are only for like these centric cards here. Like you can't acquire someone's deck. You can't acquire someone's hit points. You can't acquire like the main dungeon uh, uh, key cards. Just these four cards that are here in the center. But sometimes you will fail. And what does that mean? Well, that means that you lose a hit point. So you might go from four to three to two to one to done. Now, if for some reason that you were just bad enough and you went four, three, two, one, toast, well then what happens? Well, are you out of the game? Not quite yet. You'll take one of your little treasure cards that you've obtained and you'll take one and then get rid of it and then you'll have your life go back to full and then you'll keep playing the game. If you are really, really bad at the game, and I've never seen this happen, if you keep dying and you'll keep removing cards, and if you have no more cards to get rid of, well then you're just eliminated from the game. Although by that point in time, the game is probably over anyway. Once all the cards have been played, then the game immediately ends and then you'll calculate your points and who has the most points wins. If there happens to be a tie for whatever reason, then the player who acquired more cards, this one's four, this one's three, this person loses, and this one, because they're a hoarder, wins the game. And that is how you play Rapid Dungeon. And that is how you play Rapid Dungeon. So, my general impressions of the game. Now, before we begin, I do want to mention that this is a prototype, so none of what you see here could be the final form, if you will, of the game. Uh, once you receive it, if you decide to back it. Components! I gotta say that these sponges, which feel like the bottom of like beach sandals, I thought was a rather odd choice, but it works quite well. Uh, when I was first reading the rules, I didn't catch that you throw the sponges. I thought you just place them. And then when I reread the rules uh, a second time, because which I usually do, I, I was shocked. At, oh, you toss these. That's quite strange. And then all of this began to make a lot of sense. But I like that these are quite soft because sometimes when you throw them, they, could, they can go quite like all over the place. I've had, I've had a few of these hit people in the heads and yeah, it happens. That's not necessarily a part of the game. That's just me, the group that I play with. They're a little crazy. But one of the things I was really surprised by that I was not expecting at all is that when you toss these, sometimes they could just flip to the other side. So you're thinking, oh, white, I'm throwing white. No, it ends up on black and it's, it's hilariously weird. Also, I wasn't expecting that when you toss it for it to bounce and then land on another card because sometimes that can happen and it's, 
It is bizarre. But I think it all adds to the spirit of the game, and I'll get to that in just a little bit. Art! <laughs> the art is very reminiscent of old school JRPGs and some of the current stuff too. So if you're really in to that style of artwork, then this is gonna be really, really good for you because it really helps flesh out the theme that's kind of there, kind of not of this game. I have to say that it's really, really functional and it's, everything is very clear in the game. I really, really appreciate that. Even the treasure cards that you get, like one side is light and the monsters are a little bit darker. Your heroes also are light and dark and it's very, very clear. Also, they have their own player colors here in the middle, which they didn't have to do, but I'm so glad they did because it makes uh, assessing uh, the values of who won and who didn't a much, much quicker, which definitely helps in this game because this game is all about speed because it's rapid dungeon. One thing I also want to mention about art is that I really love how the basic card uh, is, is laid out and that if you want to play one of the expansion dungeons, it could kind of continues the picture from the initial one. And you don't really recognize it at first because I thought, what's this thing with this guy opening a door? That's no big deal. But then you see like Thief. Oh, he sees like potions and a unicorn. Oh, he sees a, a giant goblin king. And it all begins to make sense. Theme. There isn't much theme in the game. I mean, there's artwork that kind of bleeds into the game and it's just a set collection of sorts, but it really helps fit that this theme is all there together. You're collecting gems, you're, you're defeating the monsters, and you're getting points accordingly. So I think it works. I mean, they could have just done bubbles and like stars, and I'm really happy that he did it. Gameplay! Now, as I said before, when I was thinking that you just place these uh, sandals, your heroes, onto the table, I thought, okay, it's just a speed game. Let's just see how it goes and where it takes us. No, this is a tossing game where you actually toss. And it was interesting to see uh, the groups I played with because some did like a straight toss, some did the little spin toss, and it, it just really, really worked. One of the uh, younger players that I played with, I guess he, he did this vertical flip like this and it worked more often than not. It was very frustrating. But the game is actually quite approachable. And if you play the basic game, I think it works fine. I think it's actually a lot better, more interesting with the expanded dungeon. So let me share my thoughts on on that. Unicorn. Unicorns make your diamonds far more valuable. So it becomes this incentive for all the players that when you see diamonds, they're going to go for it because they're going to hope that maybe they get a unicorn later on. And when there's another unicorn, you kind of want to play them to make sure that your other players don't get it. And it's it adds like this nice urgency to every time for every round that you flip cards. The thing he said about the potions, which multiply your points with every monster that you defeat, where you're focusing more on defeating monsters because you're hoping that you'll get one of those potions and you'll rack up a lot of points. The thief is one that we most had 50-50 on. Some people liked the fact that you could steal a card that was uh, taken from someone previously. Other people didn't. I had mixed feelings about it because not just because I, I didn't mind like people stealing stuff. I, I think that's totally great. I really enjoy that. But I did think that sometimes when you're fanning the deck to try to see what they have, uh, can slow down the game. Or if you just take what's from the top and that's what you get. It really isn't mentioned in the rule book about what you get. So there wasn't as much specificity as I wanted to there. And that was the only time where the rule book wasn't clear. Uh, some parts of the English rule book were a little bit of broken English. So it wasn't too easy to understand at times. But once I read it through that second time, which I used to do for uh, uh, English translations of Japanese rules, everything made sense, especially once you play the game and everything begins to fire on all cylinders and you're thinking, oh yes, this makes sense logically of how you play this game. The trap. Trap cards are great. I really liked it. I really want, I loved how it tripped up players, how you see white and white, do you want to throw it on? And now because the trap comes, it's reversed. And so you have to remember to flip your hero around the other way. While it's a little bit easier to see with three players, but once you get to six player count, where you see six cards out there, and you're trying to move as quickly as you can, you're probably gonna miss one of the traps because you're chanting in your mind, I'm going for damage, going for damage, killing monsters, killing monsters, and then you don't get to see that trap that's there, and you realize that, yeah, you messed up. Bosses! Either you win together or you lose together, and your mileage may vary. I tend to like to not play the bosses, but I didn't like how the bosses had everything in the game. It had like your traps, your unicorns, your thieves, your potions, just everything. I really like that style of play because there's more stuff going on. There's more for you to look at. I just didn't really care for the co cooperative mode, but other players did. And I think it can work for either or. So I'm glad that he included that in there for the players who like that cooperative mode. I'm not into that. I'm more competitive. So yeah, take that with a grain of salt, base salt. But by far, 
the favorite variant is the one that I made where we had different ways to play the game. And that is, it's nothing too crazy. It was either you would, uh, I'm right-handed, like most of the world. And so we would flip our cards with our non-dominant hand and then throw with our dominant hand. And that was fine because we could usually hit the mark more often than not. But then the real fun came when we would uh, flip the cards with our dominant hand and throw the hero with our non-dominant hand. And then heroes just went <laughs> everywhere, including landing on people's heads, as you can imagine. And, there, and that was hilarious. Overall, though, yeah, I think Rapid Dungeon is a lot of fun. I think this is definitely focused more towards family and kids. Or if you just want a nice, light, breezy game to add a lot of energy to your game night, like to kind of start the night off or to end on a high. It has a nice approachableness with the tossing and the dexterity of the game, but it has enough uh, game mechanics in there of the set collection to let gamers have a little bit more control and think about what they're doing in the game. Pleasing to everyone. People are always asking me, Jay, what's the best way to get games from Asia? Jay, how do I get games from Japan? Well, and the answer is, well, just watch the video that I made. You'll have to learn, you have to definitely learn about freight forwarding services and how to, when you buy things from Japan, you have to send it to another place and then that place is gonna send it to you. Sound complicated? It's really not. But I tell them that if you wanna skip all of that, the easiest way to do it is through Kickstarters such as this, because you will simply just order it and it'll be delivered straight to your door. The publisher of Rapid Dungeon, Gota Ni, or Gota 2, made a lot of noise a few years ago when it came out with Where Am I, which is a two to four player deduction game set in the Alice in Wonderland universe. Their most popular game is Flip Over Frog, which eventually got an own port to Switch which may or may not still be there. I'm not really sure because you have to pay Nintendo so that way your game is in their library. But I have played a few, quite a few Gotani games and I've really enjoyed them. They're all very simple and very approachable, but with a few clever twists that I think to myself, it's actually fun. It's a really, really fun game. It's not gonna win game of the year, but it's definitely fun. And I really like how Kazu, the game designer of like most of Gotani, how he takes a very simple, system of mechanics and makes a really really fun game and often when i play his games i'm thinking to myself i play a lot of games a lot of games from asia every year and some of them you know they're, they're not fun they're interesting but they're not fun but all of Gotenny's games they're fun you know like where am i flip over frog like dinosaur derby he just has a, a, a lot of interesting clever twists that makes me enjoy playing his games and makes me always think, I definitely want to try, check out and always makes me curious what the new Gotenny game is for that year. And once again, my name is Jay. I play board games from Asia and share it if I with all of you. Thank you for watching. Once again, I do want to mention that all the videos at Cardboard East are completely self-funded. I do not take money from publishers. So all my videos are free. So if you want to help support Cardboard Deeds and help it grow, then please consider joining my Patreon. I'll put a link to it over here somewhere. Let's go to another video that I think you might enjoy. See you there.